Thanks for staying in tuned. It's time for us to now uh, preview Division 2 and Division 3 of action. Of course, we had three games over the two divisions on the weekend and uh, some pretty surprising results, particularly in the uh, Division 2 game, which we'll get to shortly. But uh, in Division 3, that probably is, uh, as we expected. We saw the winners we, we thought we would. Was, uh, in the first game, was South Morang uh, playing Panton Hill for the second time in, in three weeks. And uh, not much change though, over the two weeks in between those games because in uh, Round 7, it was South Morang by 24 points. This time around, 32 points, and they really are looking like the uh, the best team, uh, probably along with Park side in, in Division Three at the moment. Yeah, it shows just that stat. Then shows sort of their their uh, consistency, which they've been so good with so far this year. When you think that a couple weeks ago they beat a team by four goals, this week they beat them by five. So they're pretty much operating at the same sort of level. They're not up and down. They're just uh, right on where they want to be and proving really hard to beat. Well, in the first quarter alone, they kicked six goals free to two uh, to two goals. So they opened up, I think, was that a 27 point margin at quarter time and not much change from there on in. So Panton Hill will at least argue for three quarters they can match it and uh, Panton Hill's playing some, some good footy across this year. We've, we've spoken about their, their terrible run with injury uh, throughout the year, but they are getting their key players back. They've had uh, John Garrard back on the weekend, Jonathan Byron's back in the team. Uh, you're looking the best as well. We've got uh, Dave Angeli, Will Box and Tristan Cranberg who probably round out their best five players. So the good players are playing well and I think uh, moving on from here they'll start winning some more games. But I think at the moment South of Morang and probably Parkside as well are just that step above at the moment, which uh, is probably indicated by the fact they've lost to South Morang twice by about the same margin uh, across three weeks. But uh, for, for South Morang, Shane Whitman came back and kicked another four to kick eight in two weeks and kicked 19 goals for the year now. I think uh, it's going to be a really big threat for most uh, opposition defences in the coming weeks, I think. Yeah, you think so. And it's obviously, it uh, just gives South Morang that other dimension when they've got someone like Whitman who can consistently kick kick back to goals. It just makes it so much more dangerous. But even with Penn and Hill, I guess they're sort of still the line if they're interested say, well, it's probably better to have the injuries now than, than in a couple of weeks. So if they miss a few players at the start of the season, it's not as big a deal. If they can still get into the finals and then have all their all their players fit and firing, that will be pretty tough to beat. Well, I take on Reservoir this week, and Reservoir hasn't won since they last played uh, Panton Hill back in round five. Of course, since then they've had two buys, uh, but they've lost their uh, past two games. Uh, lost to St Mary's by five goals, which I know was, was pretty disappointing. Also lost to Parkside, who... Uh, I think it's agreed is probably the stronger side at the moment than Reservoir, but it's a game that the, the Mustangs must win if they want to stay in touch with the top four. Should they lose, they'll be out by two games. And uh, I think it's actually fourth versus fifth on the ladder. And they're desperate for a win, haven't had one for a month, and they'll be pretty keen to atone for a bit. With Panton Hill at home uh, and Reservoir's inconsistency, I'm going to actually back Panton Hill in this one. Yeah, I think Panton Hill should be, uh, should be too strong in this one. Reservoir have almost been their, their biggest, worst enemy at times this year. They've been, been really good in some games, and in some they've been pretty. Uh, Pretty disappointing. So they really, really want to try to work out get some, some consistency. Sorry, as they try to get into the other uh, bottom of the four for the finals this year. But I think Pan Hill should get the win this week. Well, when they met last time, uh, we did mention that uh, Reservoir got the, got the victory, but Pan Hill was down to two men on the bench at quarter time and three by by half times. So, uh, one person on the bench, sorry, by half time. So uh, they were crippled by injuries in that clash. But uh, as we said, uh, we, uh, Reservoir just hasn't been able to put it together so far this year. But they've had. A few, while well, they've had some good victories, also a few games where we expected them to win or to win by more when they just didn't go on with it. So they're finding life a bit more difficult in 2011, but uh, definitely a win this game will put them back in touch with the top four. But should they lose a two game buffer, it's really hard to get back from there. Uh, Heidelberg West up against Parkside so next on the agenda. And, uh, Heidelberg West going down to another loss on the weekend. Lost to St Mary's by 10 goals, which is an improved showing, and uh, they are slowly get, getting there. But uh, with Parkside sitting you know, second on the ladder with just uh, just one loss so far in 2011 with North Heidelberg West without a victory. It's pretty hard to uh, to see Parkside with the Devils not getting away with a pretty comfortable victory this time around again. Yeah, unfortunately for um, for Heidelberg West, they have got there for for a pretty pretty long year. Unfortunately, um, we said that in Division One that North Heidelberg might struggle to win, and you think that that West Heidelberg might struggle struggle to get a win as well all year. But Parkside should be. Should be far too strong this week, you well, think? Uh, in a positive for Heidelberg West, so the form of the Fenua brothers has been pretty impressive. Uh, Noah and Tavita, and Tavita named again best for, for Heidelberg West on the weekend. Noah was also in the best with him, but Tavita um, picked up the free votes from, from the opposition coaches as well. So he's, uh, he's you know, with everyone else can see he's, he's improving as well, but I think between the two of them, I think they sit, both of them are in the top 10 in the Coaches Player of the Year award uh, with the votes there, so they're uh, playing some pretty good footy despite the team not picking up a victory just yet. And the final game of Division 3 this round is South Moraine, or St Mary's rather, up against Watsonia. Uh, St Mary's looking for their third win in a row. We mentioned uh, on the review last week, they only won two games last year. They've already moved uh, in with, 
into five wins this year, and uh, a, a win on, on the weekend you'd think would, would occur against Watsonia. So six wins uh, from, well, it would be around ten if they had two buys as well. So it's a fantastic effort if they've been able to triple their, their winning tally from last year by, the, by round ten already, and uh, playing some really good fo uh, footy. And, can wrap up third spot by games and win this one, which you'd expect them to do. It's a fantastic turnaround on last year's form, of course, last year being their first year uh, in senior footy in the Northern Footy League. Yeah, it's great, great story for St Mary's. I think they're probably on track to at least finish fourth this year, so they'll make, make the finals, maybe even push up to third. So, yeah, in their second year, it's absolutely fantastic for them. They'll be looking for another strong win against Watsonia, who, even though they had their good win against uh, the good win Hardenberg against, against Hardenberg West, but uh, it you'd think that St Mary's should get a win for this one. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. I think that the bottom two sides this year found it a bit more tough than that. And it's probably a race between five, as you mentioned. But as we said, like if, if uh, Redstone doesn't get a win this week, the top four really does get a break from from the bottom three sides, and uh, it'll be a pretty big game when uh, when Panton Hill takes on Reservoir. In Division Two, we had probably the upset of the of the season across all competition. I think on, on the weekend when uh, Thomas Town knocked over Layla in the Sunday game. Uh, it was built as a pretty big clash. It was Queen's birthday weekend. It was the only game in the top two divisions. And uh, at Lagos home ground on the Sunday, as we mentioned, big crowd out. Uh, the weather stayed true, which is good to uh, really build the, uh, the game up. It was also a call, call to arms game for Lagos, raising funds for, for men's health. But uh, Thomas Town comes away with a two point win, and uh, I think we're all surprised by that. They lost by, I think it was 140 last time the two teams met in round two. Quite a big turnaround. Yeah, but uh, not, sort of not surprising. They were uh, rested or had a few players sore this week, so I didn't, especially. Uh, didn't have Shepard play, and they had a few others out yeah, as well. Yeah, so. and, and Ventura as well, so three of their biggest names weren't there, but uh, even still, I think they still would have expected the point on that occasion. Yeah, you'd think, you'd think they probably should have, but I think that resting those players might have given Thomas Town a bit of a, a bit of a rev up, and they just were able to somehow, you know, these, these things happen every now and then, they're just able to sort of get one against the odds and get a win. Well, uh, it's, it's crucial for Thomas Town, it's their second win, uh, in a row now, so they've um, they two games ahead of bottom place murder, but yeah, it's all, you know almost season the final. They can use this now as, as motivation. They push forward and say, well, it's a match with the best teams in the comp. But uh, you know that's that's par for them now, and every game they play now will probably be compared to that. Uh, and they'll definitely in the stretch home look for a much improved uh, performances than what they had in the first half of the year. But you look at the game, Layla was up by two goals at, at quarter time, and uh, well, without playing their best footy, you would have just thought they'd go on from there. But uh, second quarter, it was five goals, seven for Thomastown to just three behinds, and that really set the win up. And uh, they still led it at three quarter time, just by I think it was four points, and uh, kicked the first goal the last quarter. Uh, they only kicked one more from there. That was, that was the last goal for the, for the game, so just two goals in the final term. But Michael Kuru, is six out of eight goals for Thomas Town, was a fantastic effort. Low scoring game, but, uh, as you said, a great win for Thomas Town, something they can really build on from here. Uh, but for Laylor now, coming back from that loss, it, it gets pretty difficult. They travel down uh, further down Cooper Street, they take on Epping at Epping Recreation Reserve, and uh, it's, for, it's for now second versus fourth. And, and Epping lost by 25 points when they met. In round one, uh, they've far much improved sides since that performance, and uh, I think on their home paddock, going to be pretty tough to beat. I'm just, uh, just going to stick with Layla, I think maybe by a kick or so, but uh, there shouldn't be too much in it. But Epping would definitely fancy their chances, uh, especially getting uh, despite Layla being on the rebound. Yeah, Layla are definitely looking to bounce back this week, so they'll have that extra sort of bit of motivation. But for, for mine, other than lower plenty, Epping have been probably the the best team of the last month or so in Division Two, and I think they could actually. Uh, at home, get a win against Lela on on Saturday, so it could be a big upset. Well, not a big upset, but a bit of a bit of a turnaround there, Fairfield. Well, the top four sides in, in Division 2, we mentioned last week, got a fair bit of a gap on, on the, the next four. So you'd imagine that uh, going forward, if things say, the way they've been saying, that uh, they'll, they'll be the ones uh, there if come finals time, just a matter of getting that order right. So it's one of those games where you can really use it towards finals to get a, a good gauge of, of where you're at, but also how your opposition plays. So I'm sure both sides will use that as, as a mini final almost. So it'd be pretty interesting. But uh, Epping, yeah, as we said, the, the past six weeks has been fantastic. They had only uh, the one loss to Lower Plenty, which is their last start, but uh, even in that game, they lost by 15 points in it right till the very end. So they'll want to get a win against the top two, one of the top two sides. So far, they're zero and three against Layla and Lower Plenty this year, and uh, they'll be keen to atone for that and, and definitely make it one win out of those four. Next up is Mernder and Hurstbridge, and, and Hurstbridge comes into it after, uh, after a win against Fitzroy Stars before the break. A great win, a two point victory, where uh, I think most predicted that Fitzroy Stars would, would win that one, but Hurstbridge uh, fought hard all day. Got back from 17 points down at three quarter time, won the game, and trumping to Mernda, who hasn't won a game. I think Hurstbridge should really get their fourth win of the year. Yeah, you'd think that, um, that Hurstbridge should be able to get the win, and unfortunately for Mernda, you think they're probably going to uh, 
to struggle for a few more weeks yet, but as as we've been saying for the last month or so now, they are constantly making strides, and they're getting getting better both on and off the field as the season goes on. So it's great to see for them. They'd obviously almost now start to be looking to build towards next year. They'd obviously still be still be hoping and still be fighting to stay in Division Two this year, but they'd sort of be planning planning for the future a little bit as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's a good point, but also, I guess, uh, for them, as disappointing as, as seeing Thomas Howe win on the weekend, of course, now the two games on the bottom, it's also, you know, fuel for fire. They can say, well, if, if Thomas Howe can knock off yeah. Lalo, you know, why can't we be some of these other sides above us as well? So, definitely use that as a motivating factor, and uh, I'm pretty sure, come, you know, by the stretch of the season, they'll be winning games come season's end. But I think Hurstbridge, sort of back of last week's win, uh, they'll be pretty confident going into that one against a pretty good uh, Fitzroy Sars outfit, and I reckon Hurstbridge will get the, the chocolates in that one. Uh, the Sars are at home again this week. They're at Victoria Park. They take on Diamond Creek, and uh, Diamond Creek's playing some, some pretty good footy. They've uh, really been, they've pushed Laymore in their last day and lost by of just the five points it was where they probably led for the majority of the day and went down in the end. So they'll, um, they'll take a lot out of that game. They've played some really good footy in the first half of the year. And going back to round one, where uh, I think most, most people predicted a pretty close game when these two met in round one, and Diamond Creek uh, you know, just flogged them, won by 11 goals, and I think the second quarter really opened it up. Turned it at about eight or quarter, I think they turned it into. So they're playing some good footy. The Stars, despite being at Victoria Park, they've been inconsistent uh, all year. So it's, it's hard to stick with them. And Diamond Creek have put in some really good showings. Uh, we really have considered themselves home, home and hose against Epping when they were up by six goals. Of course, lost that game by, by five points. Lost to Layla by five points. So they're matching it with the best size. And even, as we mentioned a couple of times, when they played lower, it was only the one quarter, they were blown away. And, and I think uh, they had a win last start. And I think they'll, they'll uh, get another one. This week, and uh, I'll probably consign uh, Fitzroy Stars to missing out on finals footy. I think if, if should they lose this game, they'll pretty much stop the top four spots for those four sides inside the top four. Yeah, we've been saying uh, pretty much pretty much all season that Fitzroy's biggest problem is they are just so hot and cold from week to week. But especially as you mentioned before, the bit of a gap between the top four and the bottom four in Division Two. I think after round one, when you said it was ten, eleven goals mm-hmm. this week, will show again just how uh, how big that gap will be. Fitzroy will really need to to show up with their best game to to challenge Diamond Creek and if they don't it could get a pretty comprehensive for Diamond Creek you'd think that if it's yeah Fitzroy don't don't show up and play the best footy it could be pretty ugly. Well Diamond Creek did have a massive win in, in their last game for the bye uh, when they when they you know, comprehensively beat Mernda at home so uh, they're going with some, some form as well and uh, you know a close loss before that I think they're pretty confident playing some pretty good footy and the final game to wrap up round nine uh, it's Thomastown taking on Lowell Leader again in Lowell Plenty. I think two weeks in a row they've taken on the top side of course knocked over Laylor last week. They're going with plenty of confidence. I'll face, I'll face probably a, a stronger outfit in Lowell Plenty, given that they'll be playing a full squad this week. And uh, but of course, you know, as they showed last week, anything can happen in footy. In Lowell Plenty, uh, trudging away, they want to definitely cement that top spot. Now they're, they're on top again, just by four percent. It is. I think their percentage is 178 compared with Laylor's 174. But I think the motivation of keeping you know first spot and ladder should be enough to see Lowell get over Thomastown in this one. Yeah, I think they definitely won't. As you said, uh, Lowell obviously suffered from resting a few players, which helped Thomas Town last week, and I don't think Lowell Plenty won't make the uh, the same uh, mistake, I guess you could call it, obviously after a backfire last week. But it'd be, it'd be great for Thomas Town. They'll go in with a lot of confidence to set up their first win. And you know, as as they write, we should have a great win against Lowell, but Lowell Plenty, you think, should be too strong in that one. Well, yeah, the thing, I mean, the forwards are hard enough to, man, to match the best of times. They played in round one uh, when they met in that clash. Uh, Thomas Town. It was a uh, lot plenty by the one by about eight goals, so they really weren't happy with uh, with that performance. We worked on back. You, you just uh, you hear a few, few things that came out. They they were disappointed despite winning. Uh, they didn't play their best footy. And it was on their home paddock. They now go to Thomas Town to play there. I'm pretty sure they'll get away with you know, a good six or seven goal victory this time around. Of course, Thomas Town plenty of confidence has to be taken out of that win against Laylor. Uh, having said that, it, it's pretty tough when you, you, you know you get a win against the first side and then come up the next week and you're playing the team that's first again. So that, that could be a bit deflating, but uh, you expect Lowell Plenty to get the win in that one. That's all we have time for tonight. Make sure you tune in again next week uh, on next Thursday when we preview all the Round 11 action. We thank you for your time tonight. And uh, of course, stay on the website and go around and see all the features on the site. There's a few good articles up there, a few polls. So make sure you get clicking into those. Also, make sure you get out and support the... Youth girls at Barling Reserve on Sunday morning. There's a Friday night netball at RMIT and, of course, the juniors on Sunday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.